Determining a ship's gyro error while underway is crucial for ensuring accurate navigation and maintaining safe operations. Although the gyro compass on board may have only a minor error, even small inaccuracies in the heading can accumulate over time, leading to significant deviations from the planned route. In today's video, I'll show you how to determine the gyro error by astronomical observation using the ABC method. To start, we need to gather the following data. Our celestial body is the Sun. First, take the bearing of the Sun using the ship's gyro repeater. Be sure that the repeater being used is aligned with the master gyro compass. Upon taking the bearing of the selected celestial body, in our case, the Sun, we should also note the universal time, the ship's position, the variation in the locality, the gyro course, the compass course, and the present date and year. You can use the GPS receiver to determine the time of the observation, so as with the ship's position. Take the variation from the navigational chart, or from the ectus. The gyro course can be taken from the master gyro compass. The compass course is taken from the ship's magnetic compass. PSC means, per standard compass, and it refers to a reading from the ship's magnetic compass. Our first step is to determine the GHA, LHA, and declination of the Sun. We need a nautical almanac to determine the following values above, and I will use a 2021 edition. On the daily pages, find August 24th. The data for the Sun and Moon can be found on the right-hand page, while on the left-hand page are Aries, planets, and selected stars. Since our body is Sun, we need this column. The daily pages cover three days, so this is August 23rd, 24, and 25. The date of observation is August 24th, so it can be found in the middle of the daily page. In this column, we can find what we are looking for. Let's zoom in. The first column represents the universal time in hours, with corresponding Greenwich hour angle, and declination values. The universal time when the gyro bearing of the sun was taken was, 2 1 hours, 1 7 minutes, and 3 2 seconds. On this daily page, the GHA value corresponding to 2 1 hours UTC is 134 degrees, 2 7 decimal 1 minutes, and the declination is 10 degrees, 4 7 decimal 8 minutes north. It is understood that for this empty column, the values are 10 degrees because, by inspection, the above values so as below are 10 degrees. We also need to find the value of decorrection, which is negative 0.9. If it is not stated whether negative or positive, then inspect the value of the declination if it is increasing or decreasing. In this case, the value is decreasing, noted above. Since the GHA value corresponds only to 21 hours, we also need to determine the hour angle value for the additional 17 minutes and 32 seconds. This can be found using the increments and correction tables, located on the yellow pages of the nautical almanac. In this corner, you can find the minutes of time, and in this first column, the seconds. The hour angle that we need is in the second column, that is for the sun and planets. So the GHA for 17 minutes and 32 seconds is, 4 degrees, and 23 minutes. Always add the value of increments. So the GHA of the Sun at the time of taking the gyro bearing is 138 degrees, 50 decimal 1 minutes. Now for the D correction, we can find it in the V and D correction table. On the daily page, the value of D is 0 0.9 and the corresponding correction is 0 0.3 minute. Since the declinations on the daily page are decreasing, we will subtract the D correction. If it is increasing, add the correction. The declination of the sun is 10 degrees, 47.5 minutes north. To find the LHA of the sun, apply the ship's longitude at the time of observation. 
Add easterly longitude, and subtract westerly longitude. The LHA of the sun is, 005 degrees, 36 decimal for 2 minutes. The direction is west, since LHA is between 0 to 180 degrees. Our second step is to determine the true azimuth, or true bearing of the sun using the ABC method. To do this, we'll need Nori's nautical tables to determine the following values. First, tabulate the value of A, using LHA, and latitude. So in the nautical tables, open table A. On top, you can find the hour angle. And on both sides, the latitude. Just find the value of LHA in table A. Let's zoom in. In this case, we do not have the exact value of the hour angle, so we are supposed to do linear or bilinear interpolation, but to make this video shorter, we will just take the nearest values. The nearest hour angle is 5 degrees, 30 minutes. And the nearest latitude is 6 degrees. The value of A is 1.09. To determine the direction, the rules is written on the sides of every pages. It is stated here, named opposite to latitude, except when our angle is between 90 and 270 degrees. So the direction is, north. For table B, it is just beside table A. Table A is on the left-hand page, while table B is on the right-hand page. To find the value of B, we need LHA and declination. Let's zoom in, table B. The nearest hour angle is, 5 degrees, 30 minutes. And the nearest declination is, 11 degrees. The value of B is, 2.03. Always named B, the same as declination. If A and B have the same names, find the sum to determine the value of C. If they have different names, find the difference. Since both A and B have the same name, we will add. The value of C is 3.12, then copy the common names. If they have different names, copy the name of the greater value. Now, find this value in table C of Nori's nautical tables. On top of table C, find the value of C, which is 3.12. Let's zoom in. If we observe, there is no exact value, so we will take the nearest, which is 3.10. To determine the azimuth of the sun at the time of observation, take the latitude, or the nearest value, then tabulate. The azimuth of the sun when the gyro bearing was taken is, 17 degrees decimal 9. This is the rules for naming the azimuth. Takes combined names of sea correction and hour angle. Our C correction is north, so the prefix name of azimuth is north. The suffix name is west, taken from the name of the LHA. If this is our compass, the azimuth of the sun is north, 17 degrees, decimal 9 west, we can find the sun on the fourth quadrant. To find the true azimuth, or true bearing, this is the formula. So the true bearing of the sun is, 342 degrees decimal 1. For the third and last step, we will now determine the gyro error and the deviation for the ship's heading. The difference between true bearing and gyro bearing is our gyro error, which is 0.9. Just subtract lesser from greater. The error is less than 1 degree, and the common error of our gyro compass is usually less than 1 degree. To determine the direction, we used a rhyming rule. If the compass is best, the error is west. If the compass is least, the error is east. Best refers to the greater value, while least refers to the lesser value. Between these two, the compass is gyro bearing, because we determine the value of true bearing through calculations. Since the value of compass is greater or best, the direction of gyro error is west. By applying the gyro error to our gyro course, we can determine the ship's true course.
If the gyro is east, add it to gyro course. But if it is west, which is the same as our scenario, subtract lesser from greater. Now the difference between the true course and the compass course is the total error of the magnetic compass, just subtract lesser from greater. The compass course was taken from the ship's magnetic compass at the time of taking the gyro bearing of the sun. To determine the direction of the total error, use the rhyming rule above. Since our compass is greater, the total error is east. By applying the variation from the total error, we can determine the deviation for the ship's heading. The rule is, always reverse the sign of the variation, so this will become west, then apply big S, or big D. Since they are now different names, we will find the difference, just subtract lesser from greater. The deviation is, 2 degrees decimal 6. Then copy the name of the greater value. Let's check what we have calculated by correcting the compass. Our compass course is 118 degrees. The deviation is 2 degrees decimal 6 east. To determine the magnetic course, we can use the rhyming rule, can dead man vote twice at election, or the cadet rule. From compass to true course, add easterly variation and deviation, so westerly error will be subtracted. So we will add the deviation to find the magnetic course. Next apply the variation, which is 3 degrees decimal 5 east. Since east, add it. The true course is 124 degrees decimal 1. So by checking from the above true course, we got the same value, which means that our calculations are correct. That's all for now, I hope you found this video helpful, see you in my next video, thank you for watching, bye.